Travis, I can only imagine the last couple of weeks have been absolutely crazy for you. Can you describe the last couple of weeks and what it's been like for you and your, and your family? Yeah, it's been a, a wide a range, of, uh, range of emotions, right? Um, you know, listen, I love Xavier. I have great respect for Xavier. I wish him nothing but success, success moving forward. Um, but then all of a sudden we get a great opportunity here at Miami. And I always say God works in mysterious ways. God's got a plan for us all and everything happens for a reason. And I'm uh, just really fortunate uh, to be here. My family's really excited. You talked during your press conference about a trip that your family took to Florida and you kind of took your mind off of things for just a little while. You said you got bored and you realized at that point you needed to go right back into coaching. But did the thought ever cross your mind Maybe let's take a break for a year or two from coaching. Did that thought ever cross your mind? Yeah, you know, you talk to different guys. It's funny, I, I, a, lot of, a lot of different coaches, and I, I kept my circle really tight. And they said, hey, listen, sometimes it's good to take a year. Sometimes it's not, though. You know, you got to figure out who you are, what you need, and where you're at in your life. And um, I only wanted to jump back in if I felt like it was a place that I could absolutely crush it at. And it fit. And Miami fits. You know, I had a couple other opportunities. I just didn't feel like everything was aligned. And our director of athletics, David Saylor, uh, President Crawford, and myself, we're all aligned heading in the same direction. And we want to get this program back to where I know it can be. Have you followed Xavier at all over the last couple of weeks? And assuming you have, what has it been like to see the run that they've, that they've gone on? It's been a blast. Listen, I'm proud of those guys. Those are my guys. Uh, love those guys. Um, love the staff. I'm proud of them for keeping the team together. Maybe the hardest conversation I've ever had with anybody was when I had to tell them that I, I was no longer going to be their coach. Um, there was a lot of emotions in that room, but I told them, listen, finish the race. Win the championship. The team's good enough to do that. Um, I'm just really proud of those guys. So I'd, I'd text them after every game, you know, congratulations and stuff. So I'm uh, just excited for those guys. Travis, how are you a different coach right now? Um, and maybe thanks in part to your time at Xavier. How are you a different coach right now than you were, say, four years ago? Yeah, I think, uh, listen, I've done it before, you know, so I know exactly how I want to do things and I'm not going to budge. It's going to be my way. Um, and I'm very firm in that, um, how we want to play, how we want to do things skill development wise, recruiting, uh, staff, hiring a staff, uh, every, in every area of your program, I've done it. So I, I have a very, very good grasp of what we're going to do. What is your hope for the program you just left for Xavier. What is your hope for Xavier moving forward? Yeah, I want to see them be successful. Listen, I love Sean Miller. Again, he's been one of my mentors in this business. He's terrific. Again, they have great players. They have a great infrastructure. They have a great campus, great facility. Again, like I wish them nothing but success. So now, now you're established here. You and your family are established here. You, you coach you know, youth league sports here. Your kids play sports around here. Uh, you live in the area. How big of a factor was that in you ultimately taking this job? Um, you know, I have a lot of relationships in the area, and, and I felt like one of the reasons why I could absolutely crush it here and help get Miami back to where I know it can be um, is I, I know all the coaches, high school coaches, AAU coaches. Um, I know everybody in Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Michigan, Illinois. This is right in my breadbasket and my footprint, and uh, that made me feel really comfortable uh, that we could do a really nice job here for Miami. How familiar were you with Miami before you stepped foot on campus for your actual interview? It had been a while since I'd been here. Um, we played here, I want to say, my second year or first year at Xavier as an assistant coach. Um, we played up here. And that had been the last time that I had been here. Now, I had, before I was a high school coach, AU coach, I would brought several kids over to visit. Um, as I'd do several different schools, not just Miami. We'd visit a lot of times, you know, Ohio State, Miami, and Wright State all on the same trip. Um, so I was fam I'm fam very familiar with the program, the education. I know the academics. I knew the academics were, this is a world-class institution. Listen, this degree will set you up for life. The campus is impeccable, right? I had not been into Millette probably for about a li little bit over 10 years. So, But again, I know what the history of success that they've had here and the great players and great coaches and just honored to be where I am at today. You, uh, you coach youth league sports and your kids, again, play youth league sports around here. I overheard somebody say you're coaching a game tonight. Like yeah. you're leaving this press conference and, and this whole thing to go coach a game tonight. Yeah, I got my uh, little third grader, Winston, uh, plays on the little Shining Stars team, uh, the Alex Meacham uh, and Mike Price run. And uh, so I'm coaching that team here this spring. So all local tournaments. I told him I can't do a whole lot of traveling because I got to be here, obviously, as much as I can. And, uh, but I'm excited to see if we can get that win tonight.
I'm sure that uh, coaching youth sports has its own challenges. You know, as much as this is challenging, I'm sure that has challenges of its own, huh? It definitely does. The, the <laughs> problems are different. But you know, it takes you back though to why you, why you choose basketball, right? It's to have fun and to be around a team. Right, and, 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 I, and you gotta make sure that's still important in, in, in young men, even at this level. I know it's a business, understand that. Listen, this, you started basketball because it was fun, you love to be around a team, and you work hard, to, you know, and you become a great player. Would you say that that side of things maybe keeps you grounded to a certain extent, coaching at that level, you know, on the side? Yeah, for sure, for sure. It takes your mind off of it, and it gives you a different perspective. And again, listen, I, my family means everything to me, and I love my son, my little, my, and I love my other one. My two-year-old's too young to play right now, but I love coaching Winston. Now they play, I guess, soccer too. They play other sports. They do. I do. Now I'm not the soccer coach. My wife would be more of the soccer coach uh, in the family, uh, but they, they, Winston plays soccer as well. Do you ever get out there and kick it around with them? Man, soccer's not really my sport. <laughs> um, I, I'm, more, I'm more about the uh, basketball, so <laughs> I leave that to my wife. All right. Uh, who's the better coach, you or your wife? Oh, yes, uh, that's, you're asking me. That's the heavy hitting question right yeah, there. You've got to be well, really I careful. i got to be careful. Is my wife going to watch this? Um, I'll say my wife. <laughs> I think that's the right answer. Yeah. Travis, welcome to Miami, and thank you so much, man. Thanks.